Positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness which creates and animates all things. After years of exploring this awe-inspiring truth on this podcast, I'm super, super excited to announce that we are now going even deeper down the rabbit hole on the new late-night-style consciousness-elevating talk show called Optimistic, which features none other than you, the listeners. Optimistic is taped out of the epic, spaceship-esque, eight-bedroom property we call the Mystic Manor that myself and the rest of the Optimistic crew now navigate reality from in Venice Beach, California. And you are invited to come experience a Mystic Manor Immersion Week with us. During your week-long stay, you'll enjoy unique workshops, chef-prepared meals, one-on-one time coaching and consulting with me, and even co-creating magic with me as a guest on both Optimistic and an episode of the Positive Head Podcast. When I started this, my aim with these immersive retreats was to facilitate the ultimate spiritual upgrade and tune-up, so to speak, uh, for our guests while providing them with one of the most memorable experiences of their lives. And I'm happy to say that as of this recording, every guest at the end of their trip so far has told me that they have had a profound and transformational experience at the Mystic Manor and that they definitely want to come back. All that being said, we only have a limited number of spots available between now and next July. And as of this recording, about half of those spots are already filled. So if there's any part of you that is screaming, yes, I want to come, I feel like I need to be there, go now and book a slot with me to discuss how we can put our heads together and make it happen at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon. I know for some people, there is also that little voice in their head saying, why not? You know, I can't get off work. I can't afford it and on and on and on. But, you know, really, Henry Ford, I think, said it best. Whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And I'm confident that where there's a will, there's a way. And I'm personally committed to doing everything in my power, including discounts and payment plans to get you here if it is something that truly feels like a huge yes for you energetically and like you're meant to be here. Once again, the link to book time to discuss with me is calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon. That's spelled C-A-L-E-N-D-L-Y dot com forward slash talk with Brandon. All one word, of course. And uh, yeah, book in some time and look forward to seeing you soon here at the Mystic Manor. All right, all you positive heads, welcome. Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. So today, I was thinking about, you know, as I often do the day before, what am I going to talk about tomorrow? And I thought, well, I should just give this one up to my guides because I have no idea. And and then I forgot that I thought that. <laughs> and I went and sat in meditation and it was given to me anyway. And and here's how it came about. And we talked last week, or I had mentioned, that in my meditation is also prayer. And I wanted to talk a little bit about that before we get into today's topic. But it was interesting. I saw a post by Jennifer on the Facebook group asking about ways to pray and how to pray. And You know, it's funny, I I grew up Catholic, and so the word prayer kind of has this synonymous meaning with church to me, and that kind of makes me cringe a little bit. 
I was in church a lot when I was little, and I never really liked it much. And um, so I was, I've always kind of been a little like, uh, I don't know, I'm good with prayer, you know, meditation I can do. But I realized that what I'm doing in my meditation is prayer. And what is prayer really? But us talking to the divine, to God, to our higher self, to our angels. It's that communication with the grander aspects of ourself. We are God, aren't we? Just small little fractals of the one infinite source, which created all of us and everything. Which leads me to my topic today, which is as above, so below. But how I came to it was, so I was sitting in my meditation and what I always do in terms of my prayer is I call upon my guardians, my angels, my higher self and source, and I ask them to please surround me, be with me, and help me throughout this day and every day. And I further ask them for their help in healing, for growth, and for my well-being. And that is a prayer. Just talking to your guides, angels, whatever you want to call it, and asking for help. One of the biggest things with working with the heavens, with the universe, is we have to ask as above, so below, we can only be given what we are asking for and what we are willing to receive. So if we don't ask, then we can't be helped. So prayer is simply you connecting and asking for help in any way that you need help. Sometimes, and this is again more where this topic came from, One thing I always do in my meditation is that I imagine the love, the infinite love of the one infinite creator flowing into every single cell of my body. And I make this something that I I take time with and I actually visualize this light, brilliant light glimmering in every single cell. And so when I did this yesterday, I heard to myself, we are all cells in the body of God. Something that Dolores Cannon used to always say, we are cells in the body of God. And I thought, well, all my cells are God and we are cells in the body of God as above, so below. So that's where this came from today. So... Where does this saying come from? And it's not just a saying, it is a universal principle. It's how all of this works, everything that we know, everything that we exist in. It's how everything works. It's how magic works. And understanding this principle is vital to our understanding as souls and vital to our journey in our evolution as souls. So Hermes Trismegistus is the writer of the Emerald Tablet, which is where this phrase can be found. And there are many translations because originally it was written in Arabic and then translated to Greek. And so there's many translations, but the, the one that's most widely accepted says, That which is below is as that which is above, and that which is above is as that which is below, to perform the miracles of the one thing. So that last part, that's not as commonly heard, but I find it extremely important to leave in to perform the miracles of the one thing, to perform the miracles of God, God that exists within all of us as above, so below. When we understand this, 
miracles are possible. It's what Carolyn Mace was talking about on Tuesday's episode. When we understand that we are the divine, when we hold that belief true within ourselves and no one can tell us otherwise, that is when miracles happen. And often we call that magic. But what is magic? Magic to me is that connection with my higher self, that inner knowing, that belief that every single cell in my body is love, is light, is the one infinite creator. Because it can be nothing else. That's all that there is. That's all that exists. In the Law of One, it says that it shall be understood that any portion, no matter how small, of any density or illusory pattern, contains as in a holographic picture the one creator, which is infinity. Thus all begins and ends in mystery. No matter how big, no matter how small, all of it contains the one infinite creator. All of it contains infinity. What is in the microcosm is in the macrocosm. What is in the macrocosm is in the microcosm. We live in a holographic universe, a fractal holographic universe. Do you ever see those videos where it starts with the human eye and then expands out and out and out into the universe and it, everything looks the same? And then you can start with the eye and go down smaller, 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 down to the atoms, to the cells, and everything looks the same. As above, so below. A really good book about the holographic nature of the universe, if you're interested, is a book by Michael Talbot called The Holographic Universe. Really excellent read. So pick that up if you want to learn more about our holographic nature. Many different religious theologies teach us that we were created in God's image. We are reflections of source. We say at the beginning of this podcast that we are infinite fractals of source. So when the creator or God created all of us, this infinite energy burst out and split and created all all of these tiny reflections or fractals of itself in order to experience. It says in the Corpus Hermeticum, which is a volume of Hermetic writings, it says, From will of God, nature received word, and gazing upon the cosmos, beautiful did copy it, making herself into a cosmos by means of her own elements and by the births of souls. So in other words, from God's consciousness, from God's awareness, from his conscious thought, nature received that word, that thought, and gazing upon the creator, copied it and made herself into a cosmos as well by means of her own elements and by the births of souls. All around us, everywhere, is the creator. Beautiful copies. We're all little universes. So speaking of the Hermetic writings, the Kabbalion is a work that is based off of the writings of Hermes. And this is where the principles of Hermeticism, the seven Hermetic principles, come from that many of you, I'm sure, have heard of. And as above, so below, as below, so above, is the principle of correspondence. And I'm going to read to you just a little bit about what it says in the Kabbalion. This principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of various planes of being and life. The old hermetic axiom ran in these words, as above, so below, as below, so above. And the grasping of this principle gives one of the means of solving many a dark paradox and the hidden secret of nature. There are planes beyond our knowing, 
but when we apply the principle of correspondence to them, we are able to understand much that would otherwise be unknowable to us. This principle is of universal application and manifestation on the various planes of the material, mental, and spiritual universe. It is a universal law. The ancient hermetists considered this principle as one of the most important mental instruments by which man was able to pry aside the obstacles which hid from view the unknown. Its use even tore aside the veil of Isis to the extent that a glimpse of the face of the goddess might be caught. Just as the knowledge of the principles of geometry enables man to measure distant suns and their movements while seated in his observatory, so a knowledge of the principle of correspondence enables man to reason intelligently from the known to the unknown. By studying the monad, he understands the archangel. So from the infinitely small to the infinitely large, all the same principles apply. And if we want to understand one, we can look to the other. We are all reflections. We are all mirrors of one another. As within, so without, made in God's reflection. It's interesting, you know, how water reflects a mirror image. We are 70 to 80% water. Just another example, an image of how we are reflections of source. And how, what I think is really amazing is that when we understand this, this is what makes us magical. If you look at the magician tarot card, speaking of archetypes as we've been talking about for the last couple episodes, The magician has one hand pointed up and one hand pointed down, showing as above, so below. He also has an infinity symbol above his head. That's a clue. That's a clue that this is a secret and that once we understand that we are creator, we are God, just tiny reflections of it, and that everything that we see is a reflection of us and how we can learn from that, then it's like, that's the secret to eternal life. That is what I think that in, that infinity symbol means on the top of the magician. When you gain this connection, when you understand that you are infinity, that's the magic. And we're all magicians. We all have this potential, every single one of us. We just need to be aware of it and understand it and don't let anybody else ever tell you otherwise. You know, this reminds me, have you guys ever seen Horton Hears a Who? So in this children's cartoon, and it's from years ago, and I'm talking about the original one, but so this elephant minding his own business in nature, hears this tiny little voice calling out for help. And at first he's like, what? It, what's happening? I only see this little tiny dust speck. But if I'm hearing it, it must mean that there's something there. A person is a person, no matter how small, he says. And he goes through this whole ordeal where his town is kind of coming at him and attacking him because they think he's crazy talking to this dust speck. Meanwhile, the dust speck that he's talking to is an entire town on its own. And there's only one person in that town at the beginning who believes that there's anything outside of the town, that there's anything that exists out there in space, anything bigger. And the people in Horton's town don't believe that there's anything smaller. And so it's this beautiful depiction of as above, so below, as below, so above. And what I also love about this story is It's also an analogy for us reaching out to the heavens, to out there, to whoever is listening, calling out for help. Because when we do that, somebody listens. Like this little dust speck. Horton, this huge elephant, heard this dust speck. And the minute that he heard that call, he never left their side. They went through all sorts of turmoil. But Horton said, I will never leave you. I'm always here. I will protect you. 
And that's exactly the way heaven is with us. That's the way God is with us. That is the way our higher self is. And so the best part too about this story is at the very end, the townspeople come together and the tiniest little voice in the town is the one who tips the scales so that the people in Horton's town can actually hear them. It was the tiniest little guy, the power of being small, so much power in the little things because what's in one is in the whole. And the, it ends with this doctor, the guy who was the only one that thought there was anything bigger outside in Whoville. And a little speck of dust comes and lands close to him asking for help. And so the fractal continues. This is a holographic universe. I encourage you to guys go watch Horton Hears a Who. There's a lot more analogy in there. There's a lot more fun things to to pick apart and um, or just enjoy. So I thought that was a fun little thing to share with you all, a little thing I've been thinking about. Just kind of came up in my mind and I've always loved that that cartoon. There's so much in it. But back to business. Um, I found a clip by Guy Finley where he's talking about this concept, this principle of as above, so below. He was actually on the show episode 853. He wrote a book called Relationship Magic. Of course, here's the magic again today. But um, this clip is called As Above, So Below. And I think he has got some very beautiful, very powerful words to explain this concept. Take a listen. What is heavenly? cannot be understood on its own terms. Heaven cannot be understood on its own terms. Heaven is understood through its reflection on this earth. What a massive mistake a man or a woman makes who imagines they understand God's life in quotes, his plan, which, by the way, they've painted themselves. And that's why the teachings are and always have been what they are. Parables, ways of showing how things reflect one another. The introduction of fractals long before the word existed so that one could see in the greatest was the least, and in the least the greatest. And the reason that we study what we do, including sometimes the difficulty of listening to me go on about things that are probably way the heck over your head, isn't so that it's over your head, but so that you can start to see and feel certain things, that through the ideas within you, a certain reason can begin to be awakened. A human being who has not reason knows nothing of reality at all because reasoning is the first introduction to a relationship between themselves and the greater world that has given them life. In this instance and how it applies. The winter season on earth is by itself the reflection of the heavens in their repose. That's what the winter season is. It's just a reflection of heaven's repose. And heaven's repose, just as is true of winter on this earth, is a necessary stage of restoration, of gathering itself for the next wave of activity that will again express everything that was latent in that season. And when you don't understand that, then you look at moments where Maybe because of your work, you meet this emptiness inside of you. And you go, oh, this emptiness, this terrible emptiness. And you don't understand because you haven't the capacity yet to reason and understand. As above, so below. This emptiness is the winter of this moment. That's all it is. It's a moment where everything is still because nothing is being reflected other than the perfect unity 
between the moment and what is reflecting it. So naturally there's no movement in it. There's no quality or character apart from awareness itself, presence itself. And you can start to understand that and use the mind at this level, which we have to do, without the ability to reason our way into an understanding of the relationship between heaven and earth. There is no capacity to understand the relationship. Because you'll see heavenly things, but you won't understand how they apply to you in this world when something challenges what you think this world is about. You get quiet and you suddenly feel empty. You don't want the emptiness. You start painting it, thinking about it, how to fill it, why you're empty, what should have happened that didn't. Instead of understanding the divinity of that emptiness, which is the perfect reflection of the soul, of this nature, and what it is showing, being shown about. Listen, not being shown about itself. That's the problem. The inner relationship of words. It isn't something you're being shown about yourself until yourself is the thing showing it to you. Then it's a unity. Then you understand the purpose of it. But until then, it's you thinking about what you're being given to see. And the reason you think about what you're being given to see is because something in you opposes it. And so then you start to understand what man, what man taking thought, what what which person taking thought can add one cubit to their stature is exactly the same passage as do not, uh, uh, do, not, uh, do not resist evil. Do not oppose what opposes you. Because the only reason that you take thought is because something's opposing you. Pure and simple. And it's not you taking thought. It's the one who made the image in its own image and then wants to make the image match better what it needs to match in that moment. There's nothing that happens on this planet there's nothing that happens in you or me. Not one thing that isn't a reflection of creation in time. And the reflection of creation in time is heaven showing itself through that creation. And if you'd understand that, you would be part of the creation and part of the creator's life. Just like that quote I read from the Law of One at the beginning of the show, he was saying that there is absolutely nothing that can happen on this planet that does not have creator in it, that isn't a reflection of creation in time. All of it is the creator. And when we recognize that and understand that, then we are creator then we know it. Then we are the magician. He reminded me a lot of when he was talking about the concepts in the the Corpus Hermeticum. And I'm going to read just one more passage there because it fits really well with what he was saying. The single sense and thought of cosmos is to make all things and to make them back into itself again as organ of the will of God, so organized that it receiving all of the seeds into itself from God and keeping them within itself may make all manifest and then dissolving them, make them all new again. And thus, like a good gardener of life, things that have been dissolved, it taketh to itself and giveth them renewal once again. Like he was talking about the winter, the winter and the emptiness of our lives. When we can see the divinity in that, I love how we talked about that heaven cannot be understood on its own terms, but only through its reflection on earth. And that's why we're all here, so God could understand himself, could experience himself. That's why he created all of us as tiny reflections. All of us are part of the one. Helping heaven to understand. And there's a lot of peace in knowing that we'll never understand it all and that it's all just going to continue to be a great mystery. But what we do know is that we are reflections and that if we want our outer world to change, then we must change our inner world, right? As Gandhi would say, if you want to see the change in the world, then you be the change in the world because as within, so without. 
as above, so below. And this principle can also be found in the Upanishads, the wisdom of the Hindu mystics. It says there that what is within us is also without, what is without is also within. He who sees difference between what is within and what is without goes evermore from death to death. So continuing this karmic cycle of doing things over and over again and not getting to that secret of eternal life where you can get off that karmic wheel. Another passage in the Upanishads. Within the city of Brahman, which is the body, there is the heart, and within the heart there is a little house. This house has the shape of a lotus, and within it dwells that which is sought after, inquired about, and realized. As large as the universe outside, even so large is the universe within the lotus of the heart. Within it are heaven and earth, the sun, the moon, the lightning, and all of the stars. What is in the macrocosm is in this microcosm. Mm. And with that, I am out of here for today, everybody. I'm going to leave you with a song. I've played this before, but it's one of my favorites, and I think it fits very well into today's episode. This is Between by Satsung featuring Nako. Until next time, everyone. Love you all. And if you're feeling the call to come for a week retreat style mystic manner immersion, remember to go now and book your time to speak with me directly about stepping into the optimistic vortex at calendly.com forward slash talk with Brandon while there are still spots left. Otherwise, I look forward to co-creating magic with you at the mystic manor. Balance on the past said there's no need to ask for more Between the love that we seek and the love that's already there Now let this soften my soul and focus my stare I said this life got me by the heart said it's in our vice Not too proud to go and seek advice When I know that I really ain't knowing nothing at all I said perhaps I do Made a transition and I finally got a clue But I ain't got a clue on what to do When I'm sitting and waiting and forming a plan With a taking my life in my hands Said that I am worthy No matter what they say I have purpose When I'm following my dharma and I serve this Well this is what I'm aiming for Everything I need And all that I am grateful for And this is where we find out how to live Make me the trees and I swear that I'll give Everything I can to keep air in your lungs Truth on your tongue, the work is never done The work work is never Balance on the past said there's no need to ask for more Between the love that we seek and the love that's already there I let this soften my soul and focus my stare Yeah, I almost lost hope, but I didn't Had to learn things the hard way to cope with the mission Sometimes it seems so far away And the vision that I followed Didn't play out how I saw it But the message and the lesson Manifested in the knowledge That my love is a palette Groovy and colorful My love is in spirit Physical and tangible This love is worthy But it's gonna take some work If you're willing and available There's things that we could learn Between what comes naturally And what you gotta work for Beneath all that that lies The beauty that you live for Believe in the treasures That we all seem to dig for Deep in 
ninja health Buddha. You were made to transform. So go on with your bad self. Put your back into it. Go on with your higher self. Sweat and blood, prove it. If you want it, you can have it. Pay your dues, witness magic. Wrap it up in a package. Give it back to the masses. Said there's no need to ask for more. Between the love that we seek and the love that's already there, I let this soften my soul and focus my stay. Sit the